Hi everyone, this is the Quad QA meeting, which is happening on May 10th, 2018. Uh, so today's agenda is mainly to talk about the uh, uh, SOAK test that we had been doing on Flexpod for a while now, almost like three months now. And we had installed Quad 5.0 and then we did a couple tests there. And uh, uh, probably um today i think there is another development is also busy with some other calls so i thought like let's go with qa uh whatever we did here and gopi is also on the call so he can uh, give us some insights to it and after that we can share this document to the with the development and we can get more comments and uh, in future like what kind of uh, uh uh, performance measurements do we need to take so this is just the beginning like what the test that we had started doing on 5.0 so being said that uh, Sid do you want to take over yep, sure okay. yeah and then oh sorry you said before you start so this is a collaboration effort this document is and the test that we have done is a collaboration effort from uh, flex spirant and onf yeah sorry Sid please go ahead Oh, can you give me the control? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, Yovang, can you? I think Yovang needs to go. Let me see if I can give it or not. Uh, presenter, right? Yeah, presenter. Okay. Does it work? Okay, yeah. So let me know when you guys can see my screen. Yep. Yes, I can. We can. Um, hi, this is Siddharth. Uh, I work for Flex as an SDN developer, and we have been uh, collaborating with uh, Spirant ONF around testing of Code 5.0. And mostly the testing is around V service gateway, like creating those gateways, what are the network throughput tests, and how a packet traverses from one end of a leaf switch to other end of a leaf switch via a core via stack, which is a trellis network. So the current documentation is around the soak and the stability test, which we uh, were doing as such a dimension from past three months. This was mainly around okay, we deploy a core stack, we keep that running for a long duration of time and see what are the things which goes wrong, what are the things we can, like how many VSGs we can create, what is the time duration to create a VSG, uh, can we send some traffic around the core stack via VSGs? So those are the normal test scenarios which we have uh, like tested using Spirant and the FlexPod. So just uh, an overview, the first section, the R code scale and stability test gives an overview of uh, the various tests performed, which is uh, on code 5.2, which was the uh, latest table release available when we deployed this code. So here, what we have been doing mostly is around verifying the V service gateways are created or not, verify that respective containers are created, and the stability test, which I just mentioned above. So let's go over to the testbed environment, which is available with FlexPod 1. So here we have standard compute nodes, which are recommended by, uh, or by, for the, by ONF for core deployment. And these are like general purpose compute node, not an OCP, but these are reference platform from Flex. And we have like standard memories, like 192 gig RAM, and we have two one gig port and two forty G dual uh, port Melonix NIC card, which is which has already been tested for core deployments, and one SSD which is for four eighty eight GB, and we have been using Acton six seven one two switches in a leaf spine topology, which is re recommended by for core deployment. So the topology of core is the one which is recommended based on leaf spine topology, 40 gig fabric network. Here for a residential core, we need an OLT box, white box, ONU, router gateway for ideal testing of a residential core stack. 
but what we have been doing here is we are trying to emulate a subscriber traffic using a Spiron test box, Spiron test center. So your Spiron test centers would be creating various S tags and tags required to emulate a subscriber traffic, which will be explained later on over here. So what Spiron test center is, uh, it's, it's a virtual tester which can create VMs in different kind of environments. It can create a VMs on an EXXI server to send the traffic. It can create a VM on the OpenStack cluster itself so that we can do in-band testing, all sort of those. So it's a simple VM which we have deployed on EXXI 5.5 actually. Let me just correct this. And the like the test scenarios were details over our year. First is the scenario one, uh, where we can create a virtual service gateway on an OpenStack cluster itself. But uh, this is kind of a test case which can be validated. But for the current test purpose, what we have been doing is we are creating the STC VM on an EXI 5.5 uh, VMware cluster which is outside a core stack. Now, for us, a core is a black box where we can send traffic from one end and from the other end of a Spiron test center, we can receive the traffic. So with this, we can measure various parameters like latency, what is the network throughput, how a packet is traversing in the core stack. So these are the different uh, test scenarios which we can demonstrate using Spiron test center. Oh, any uh, questions around as of now? Hello. So, uh, uh, quick question. So, the VSG uh, you mentioned is outside uh, the card black box. Oh uh, no, service gate VSG is on the on one of the compute node. I see. Uh, so, do we are we considering that as a part of uh, uh, card deployment? That is, uh, XOS actually deploys the VSG. Uh, yes, yes. XOS is uh, deploying the VSG to create one subscriber. Like whenever we create a subscriber. For that subscriber, a VSG is created. Yeah. So um, in that case, I guess my question is, uh, is this being targeted for 6.0? Because the 6.0 uh, scenario is different. Uh, current testing uh, we have done is 5.0, and like we haven't like had any chance to work on 6.0 as of now. Okay. Yeah, I I think okay, think yes. Gopi, Gopi, I think for 6.0, based on the final decision and then how it works, that we need to modify the test, whatever we have, and then it will be a new test purpose completely. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to no, 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 that's okay because there are no VSGs and uh, so definitely we need more inputs. I think before we start uh, uh, testing and doing these kind of measurements, we will get some development inputs as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, at least for when it comes to the um, hardware setup design, uh, we can look at the um, nominal r -cord pod that we have at, uh, at the ONF office. Mm -hmm. uh, and use that to replicate uh, at least the hardware setup for uh, for the test for 6.0. Obviously, uh, there's going to be a software stack as well with Kubernetes. Um, uh, that is uh, the documentation for that is partially there internally. If you want to get a head start, um, uh, but but and and I don't think there's a problem sharing it with anybody. Uh, Luca has that. So if you need to need a head start, that's fine. But uh, I didn't realize that this was basically based off of master. That is the old five uh, five point zero setup. Uh, yeah. But, but, but right. go ahead. Right. Because I think what we are targeting here is after the release is stable, like once all the issues are fixed, then at that point, um, the next release we will start when when there is a six point one going on. Then our target is to start all these tests on six point zero and then get the performance and stability tests verified. I but, see. So the test will start after six point zero is released. Yes, exactly. I see. Okay. Yeah. Only few things we will be starting test starting to test in six point zero, but not everything because. Um, because we still need to wait for all the features to be integrated and then well tested before even we start with this kind of uh, um, heavy tests. I see. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. 
please continue yeah so if we look at the overall test scenario what we have been testing is just the v service gateway component the one end of the stc virtual is sending traffic to v service gateway and from the other end we are receiving the traffic so that's what the whole purpose is and as you know like v service gateway we can also control various parameters like bandwidth for a subscriber so those are the other test scenarios which we can demonstrate kind of in functional test scenario so now let's look at uh, what the uh, what a packet looks like in a uh, residential core so to explain that first i would go like you to go over to a uh, an R code packet walk to which was uh, like available in various uh, mailing thread and all. So here, if you see, uh, sorry, the diagram is a bit uh, blurry, but uh, somehow the Google Doc is not uh, letting me update a very good picture here. So here you can see that from one end, the PC where a subscriber is created, it will go to a CPE, then to an OLT device. Then it will enter a leaf uh, spine topology, which is the Twelly's network of uh, code. And on the other side is a CDN network. So one is the subscriber end, the other is the CDN side. And that was an R code packet walkthrough would be. So here using Spiren Test Center, what we are doing is we are trying to emulate a subscriber end and also the CDN here. So what Spiren Test Center is doing is it's generating a packet with various tags, which are the subscriber tag and the customer tag. And on the code, we are doing a queue in queue cross connect, which will let the service gateway know, okay, when you receive a packet on the leaf space, you need to forward to the co corresponding compute node, which is hosting the service gateway for that subscriber. And once it enters the compute node, it will do the various stripping of the S tag, C tag, and then it will tunnel the packet from the compute node to the other leaf switch using the VXLAN tunnel encapsulation. And in between, there would be various destination lookup, SR lookup, and all those things going on. And then the packet would finally arrive at the CDN end. So here, what we are doing is we are sending a one gig traffic, for example, and we are trying to see if we are receiving the one gig traffic or not. So this is kind of the overall packet walkthrough. So let me go back to uh, the older things here. So here, as you can see, like the wire sag will uh, let us know like the various parameters around the packet. So let's look at the scenario two. Yeah, so this scenario two describes the double VLAN tag packets which we, we are sending, the S tag and the C tag. And this packet walk to is the same which I explained uh, with the diagram. So from STC virtual, it enters the switch, fab, uh, the switch fabric, which has a compute node, and it goes back to the STC virtual VM on the other end. So coming from the virtual VM container, going to switch fabric, going to service gateway, coming back to switch fabric, and finally going to the CDN end. So using Spiral Test Center, we can also look at like here, the traffic which was generated was a raw traffic because the requirement here was to have a specific VLAN tags which are created when you create a cell like when you create a subscriber, the service gateway associates a corresponding uh, VLAN tags. So we need to take those VLAN tags and edit the draw data frame to have those specific tags so that it could be like, th there is no uh, like discrepancies around the data packet which traverse in the core stack. So using Spiral Test Center, what we did is we create a raw frames and attach the corresponding VLAN tags which are created. So with the current uh, environment, we try to create uh, various service gateways and approximately 17 were created and corresponding CPEs which were created were 25. So 
uh, any questions around this topology or the packet walkthrough? Okay, I can go ahead then. So this section explains the various details of these parent test centers. And then this is just an explanation about this parent uh, configuration UI, which shows uh, the uh, various streams which are generated. And also this can list down uh, like what is the average latency then minimum latency, max latency, throughput, all sort of these information, and we can create a detailed report using Spiron Tester, sorry, Spiron Test Center for every stream of traffic which we are creating. So here, these scenarios could be like multiple scenarios. It's just what we want in a raw data frame. We edit those and create reports and, we, and send it out to like the users. So now let's go over to the various issues which we observed. And uh, the first issue is the uh, limitation of the cross connect. I guess uh, you Wang would be able to better explain these uh, uh, issues here which we have been observing around Cod 5.0. Uh, you, do you want to go over to this? Okay, yeah. So, uh, so there's a limitation of the cross connect we are using for this test. Um, because currently, uh, we can only use Crux Connect on the same deep switch, which means uh, since uh, we need to cross connect the Spiron box with the VSGs, the compute node uh, that has the VSG. So, but there's only one compute node on the same leaf switch as the Spiron box, so we can only use the VSGs on that compute node. Um, and uh, because the the VSG are, the VSGs are created randomly, so we, so not all the, actually we have like three times more compute uh, VSG there, but we can only use uh, the ones on on the specific compute node. Uh, and moving forward, I think I I talked to Charles, and uh, there there will be two solutions, but uh, they are not. Oh, so one will go to one. It's already in, in one twelve, but it's not in the the version that Card five zero is using. So uh, and there's another uh, another feature to for what double tag traffic without using a cross tag, but that's not implement implemented yet. So uh, so I think for, for Card five dot zero we can only yeah this is. Or what we can do. Mm. And the second one, okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's related to this test or not, but it's something we uh, observed when we uh, run we run card for several weeks. I think we uh, observed out of memory issue on the on the fabric container. Um, but at that time, we were not able to to get the, the logs to get the beginning of the failures because um, the log size is limited. And later we increased the log size. So, but we never hit that issue again. So next time, if we hit it again, we we will be able to get all the logs. Okay, I can go over the third and fourth. So one issue regarding the performance of VSGs and VCPA's creation. So what we observed was when we uh, try to scale up, let's say, four VSGs, and then when we try to uh, increase them by four, uh, four count, so it always, the first VSG creation always takes less than a minute to get created. And then the later, the second one takes like 10 minutes and uh, the third one takes like 10 to 15 minutes and the fourth one. So it's like uh, one at a time. That is what we observed. And uh, usually to make sure that all the four VSGs are up and running fine, sometimes we need to wait like 45 minutes to one hour to make sure that everything is up and running fine. So 
this is the issue which I already brought up to the uh, XOS team and uh, they had asked me to uh, get specific uh, logs for this by running this test like before, after and during it, during the creation. So I think we need to repeat these scenarios and then get these logs for more investigation purpose. And the other one is the uh, issue with dangling VSGs. Um, so there is an issue right now that if, if for some reason one of the VSG creation fails and then it's still hanging on to get some connectivity and then download the VCP container to get created, then uh, uh, then if for some reason if we are trying to recreate them or uh, create more VSGs, then all the successive VSGs are also hung. And even though the internet connectivity, let's say, is fine, and then all the compute nodes are back to normal, uh, and uh, until we delete the older VSG, dangling uh, VSG, which is hanging there, um, the other successive VSGs will not get created again. So it's like you have to clean up everything and then restart creating VSG. So this is a very often issue that we had, I have been seeing on the flex board. And sometimes we so notice that for some reason, let's say the Ono's uh, fabric ran out, ran out of memory and then uh, we lost connectivity to the compute node for some reason, then we used to notice this kind, these kind of issues. So it is quite uh, possible to happen all these issues. And even the Yovang, the one which he mentioned, the out of memory, I think this is other issue because we hit this couple times and and then unfortunately we were never able to get the log. So I think we need to keep a close look on these issues for sure. Yeah, I think there are other issues which were, but then they have been already fixed. Uh, so they we uh, I have not listed in here. These are the pending issues currently, whatever we have. So that's it. Sid. Any other questions on the um, issues? Okay. Sit. Oh, not on my side. Okay, so I think we are done with uh, this. So, Sid, um, or anyone else have any other questions or anything, Sid, that you want to share more? Oh, no, this looks good to me. That's what we wanted to present. Okay. All right then, thanks. Uh, anything else that we want to discuss today in this call? It looks like we are done. Yeah, we are done. Yeah, like going forward, the one thing which is like, we would like to get more uh, like the scenarios which we could be tested on uh, pod. Like these are the scenarios which we came up during the discussion and all, but we would like to get more uh, inputs around the various test cases. Yeah, sure, Sid. I think uh, by the end of the release, we should be able to get some good scenarios to start with the same kind of test for 6.0. Okay. Um, uh, if also, if it is, if it is possible, uh, uh, Sid, you or maybe somebody from your team can also uh, attend the COD TST because uh, we do discuss a lot of um, uh, design intent uh, and questions around what what the components of uh, the upcoming release are going to be. Uh, so uh, we do that uh, either in something called the COD TST or the COD platform call. Uh, Cod TST happens on uh, Tuesdays. Cod platform call happens on Wednesdays. Um, <clears throat> if you or somebody from your team can attend both, that would be great. But at least one of them will at least keep you in the loop of uh, what is going on uh, in with the uh, with the development team. Both are open calls. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sujita, can you help me uh, in forwarding those invite? Yeah, sure. I was just going to say that they, uh, especially the TST calls, they are on the open court calendar. So if you yep. download that calendar, then you should be able to uh, see them. 
so tst calls would be de definitely helpful as gopi said okay yeah, yeah thank so, you so so yeah maybe you can start with the tst uh, do you have the uh, calendar uh, said the uh, cord calendar cord public calendar uh, open cord yeah it's called the cord public calendar or i think the open cord public calendar <laughs> I think from the home wiki page, there is an option to add add it to your, if you scroll to your right. Oh, oh Sajita, can you send me yeah, the- Yeah, yeah, uh, I will send you the- yeah. yeah, no worries, I can send you. Okay. Okay, I think this sounds good. I, I just wanted to bring this as a brief introduction to the QA uh, and then discuss this uh, results. And uh, if possible, then we can uh, a quick, do a quick presentation of the TST as well, so everyone knows about these tests and they can give more ideas. I will share the document to the development group as well. Okay, any other topics? No. Okay, sounds good then. Uh, thanks everyone, thanks Sid. For the present. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. A lot. Okay, cheers, guys. Bye. Yeah, see you yeah. in two, uh, two weeks after. Bye bye.